Good morning, everybody. Uh, so just as we get started, who has been here for the last two or three days? Raise your hands if you were here for the science part. And who is not here? Who's here just for today? Okay, great. Thank you very much. Uh, who's, who's, who lives in Berlin who did not take a plane or train to come here? Just local? Okay. And so the rest of you are... Who's from Russia? Okay, quite a few. From the rest of Europe? And from other countries, uh, continents, Asia, US? Okay, great. Uh, so what we're going to do right now is have a recap of what those of you who were the first ones to raise your hands heard. and. I'm one of the new ones as well, so I'm going to ask them what this all meant. And then we're really going to transition from talking about the technology and the underlying science and the developments to what it means in the real world of business. And so in science, you assume you have a data set. In business, you need to figure out what data set you need, and then you need to figure out what data set you can get, and those might not be the same thing. What kind of impact does that have? Uh, can science overcome some of it? Th these are the kinds of questions we're going to deal with today. And our speakers are by and large going to be business people, even though that some of them are quite technical. So they're used to being asked questions. And we hope that you will ask questions or you might even volunteer comments because many of you are yourselves technical and have a lot of experience. So we're hoping today to get a lot of back and forth. And to start that, uh, I would like to ask, first of all, Arkady to give a, a small context for the new business people. Just, you've heard, Okay, how many of you know what Yandex is? Okay. How many of you really don't, but you came anyway? <laughs> okay, well, we'll assume you know what Yandex is. We'll, um, we'll start then with Natan to just give some background on what happened for the last few days. What, what was new, what was mentioned, uh, what did you learn? So first of all, it was a very intense uh, conference. The first day was 13 hours straight with very, very short intermissions. So obviously it's gonna be very difficult to summarize it in a uh, few words. And I'm gonna miss a lot of things. And those of you who were there, uh, who were here in the last three days are welcome to later join in and mention those things that uh, I'm missing or the important things I'm missing. So basically machine learning is about 65 years old uh, and uh, throughout the years there were a lot of developments and a lot of things that uh, were left and uh, gone down the drain. And uh, nowadays, basically in the last 15 years, there are two techniques, two major techniques uh, that are uh, really becoming uh, the main tools in uh, machine learning. One of them is deep learning. Uh, deep learning was basically started several times by Jeff Hinton. Uh, it was neural network in the very early 80s he started that and uh, then in the early 2000s he uh, termed it uh, deep learning. And uh, this is now uh, one of the major fields uh, in which a lot of uh, success in applications has uh, been happening. Uh, the other uh, field is what's called support vector machines. Uh, this is a very deep, uh, is based on a very deep mathematical theory. I'm not going to talk <laughs> about that. Um, uh, and and uh, the person who uh, really started it was Vapnik with his colleague Chavonenkis. Uh, and uh, Vapnik was here uh, to discuss uh, this. So I would say that on uh, deep learning we had uh, two keynotes. Uh, one of them was Lior Wolf from uh, Tel Aviv University. Uh, and the other one is uh, Pierre Baldi from uh, Irvine. Uh, 
Lior uh, discussed, uh, did in the past a lot of applications uh, for face recognition, for uh, text analysis, for uh, image uh, analysis, for image to text analysis, uh, etc. Pierre Baldi concentrated on uh, genome and basically bio, uh, biological uh, problems. Uh, Vladimir Vapnik, who gave uh, two talks, really presented uh, a very new uh, um, work uh, that he's working on, which has not been published yet. So maybe I'll mention a little bit more about it, just because uh, this is work you cannot yet read uh, in uh, papers, and uh, that is interesting. Uh, Bernard Chulkov, who is uh, one of the key uh, researchers in uh, machine learning, uh, one of the first uh, students of uh, Vapnik on that uh, in kind of the modern era, um, is uh, presented uh, his uh, stuff, also theoretical and applicative work around machine learning. Uh, I was pleasantly surprised to be exposed to a lot of uh, research and development that's taking, care, uh, taking place in Yandex. Uh, a lot of people with uh, very good mathematical background on one hand, uh, machine learning background and domain uh, knowledge are applying uh, various uh, uh, approaches to uh, sophisticated state-of-the-art uh, problems. Um, to name uh, a few, um, uh, to name a few, uh, I would say computational modeling, uh, genomic modeling, um, in in terms of what uh, what the core uh, of Yandex is, of course, advertisements, um, uh, search engine, uh, and the like recommendation engines uh, for media, for TV, for uh, music, uh, etc. Geo-based uh, uh, applications uh, like Yandex Traffic, uh, etc. Uh, but then, uh, in addition to that, very scientific work, for example, this work in uh, CERN, uh, where they are analyzing uh, the outcome of uh, the collider, uh, where immense, immense amounts of data are being produced at a very short time and have to be analyzed uh, on, on a timely basis uh, on one hand and on the other hand something that uh, I had no idea that Yandex is uh, doing, uh, seismic servers and uh, seismic analysis. That's an area that's been around uh, for many years but they're applying uh, their own techniques uh, with the geologists uh, in the background and uh, new uh, computational tools. So that was uh, quite interesting for me uh, at least all really state-of-the-art stuff. Um, what, uh, what we understood is happening specifically here in Yandex, uh, which kind of uh, was uh, new to me, uh, so I guess it may be new to others as well, is that they developed their own uh, tools for internal use, but also tools for other customers to use. And uh, then they bind themselves uh, with the domain knowledge from uh, specific experts uh, to produce a nice result, and that was interesting. Um, as I mentioned, uh, Vapnik uh, really presented two uh, new concepts that are related to uh, support vector machines, uh, and that uh, is uh, useful to, uh, uh, to mention. The first one is synergy, and synergy is his approach for combining between experts. So the idea of combining between experts is about 25 years old, maybe even more. Uh, and um, throughout the years, it become, became established that simple averaging is the best way to combine between uh, experts. I actually talked about that uh, in my talk as well, uh, demonstrating techniques to, uh, to improve on that. Uh, but he's uh, looking into what's called the joint probability between the different experts and analyzing that probability. Again, there's a mathematical uh, trick there by assuming something uh, uh, about the monotonicity of the experts, he can then actually solve it uh, in a very clean mathematical way. That was uh, quite interesting. Uh, the other concept that he presented was privileged knowledge. And his example was very simple. So if uh, uh, we are trying to teach uh, um, a model to, say, discern between uh, cancer and non-cancerous uh, x-ray images, uh, instead of just learning uh, from uh, the uh, pixel representation of the data, he suggested to uh, look at what doctors write as a report 
on each one of uh, those uh, images and learn from the language that doctors are using to add uh, specific knowledge that can then be transferred to the actual estimation of images. So it was in the domain transfer and he got into various uh, philosophical issues about uh, domain transfer in language and in poetry and in uh, various other uh, uh, domains. Uh, but the basic idea was that he's uh, looking at this kind of domain transfer. Uh, there are still some posters uh, on uh, in the walls here and uh, outside which uh, represent some of the work that uh, has been presented. And uh, I think that kind of wraps up from uh, my perspective what was here. Of course, I left a lot of things uh, undiscussed uh, and hopefully some of the people in the audience that were here uh, will add them later. Thank you. Arkady, you came in for the, for the second Vapnik lecture. What did you hear? Well, uh, first of all, uh, this conference happened, and it's important. There is an importance in it on itself. Uh, we know that there are some so, some conferences in machine learning already exist, and they existed before this conference. But uh, what actually, be, when we were organizing it, uh, the main thought was to understand, do we have some, some uh, knowledge here in Europe, in this area? And it uh, looks like the conference showed that yes, we have uh, the data, data science school, which uh, was born in Europe, still exists. Uh, we look at each other and we see that we are here, we do exist. Uh, 50, 50 presentations of 60, total were done by people from Europe, uh, which means that, yes, uh, this science uh, originates from here, at least in part. Uh, and this was one thing. And another thing was, uh, of those three days, which I noticed was this uh, argument between the two schools, which two major schools, which um, today exist, so di different views on the data science. One is what we call deep learning, another with, with, which we call now intelligent learning, which originates from SVM, support vector machines. But the main difference in the approach is, uh, as far as I understood it, uh, was one school uh, tries to get a result without trying uh, to understand how the things are made of. Uh, and another, another school, it tries to, to understand how, how the things are made, what the things are made of, and then to, uh, to predict what, what's going to happen. Uh, uh, and as, uh, uh, as discussion uh, sh showed, what discussion showed here was that actually both approaches try to, to uh, what, what I exp expressed as a, as a common uh, explanation of these two different theories, but what the discussion showed was that actually both approaches try to deeply understand what's going on. It's not, uh, 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 there, is n uh, there is much more in common than uh, uh, there is uh, there, there, there a difference there. So, uh, so let me ask, um, from a layman's point of view, I would say it's, it's basically the difference between pattern recognition and something that is more rules-based. But can you ultimately rec recognize a rule? Is that what we're talking about? Where do the rules come from? Uh, or the models? Well, uh, no, 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 you may be. So basically, one, uh, one thing about uh, that, about um, support vector and, and deep learning. Deep learning is emerging as uh, a very useful tool when there's immense amounts of data. And nowadays, for several problems, there is immense amount of data. And apparently, deep learning was able to uh, do uh, quite a bit of stuff. But you know, even when, uh, when looking at all the data in YouTube, and you can imagine that this is an immense amount of data, uh, still learning to, to uh, detect a cat or to distinguish a cat from a dog is uh, non-trivial. 
Uh, whereas we know that uh, human brains learn that from very few examples and very, very quickly. Uh, Vapnik was uh, arguing that uh, with support vector machines, uh, one can actually learn decent models or decent uh, representations of uh, data uh, with very little uh, amounts of data compared to deep learning. Uh, and uh, this is what he's interested in, in trying to demonstrate that in a sense that there's no big data problem uh, because that uh, with very good models one can learn from very small amounts of data. So both are trying to learn the rules. One is not putting a lot of prior information in uh, and the question of how to put prior information in and that uh, touched upon signal processing and where signal processing, uh, is signal processing going to be replaced by uh, machine learning or is it going to just augment machine learning? Uh, that was an, another issue and uh, I believe, uh, my personal belief is signal processing is here to stay and is actually uh, uh, being augmented by machine learning but cannot be replaced by machine learning, uh, something that some people started arguing. Wapnik put, put it uh, in this way, he says that his approach is in creating the violin, the best violin possible, like Stradivari did, and the deep learning is to how to perform, how to play on, on a violin, it's like what Paganini was doing, playing on any violin. And, and uh, you know, in, a, in a, a little amusing way, he said uh, some people uh, are very, very good players and they can play on a poor violin as well, but without getting into issues. And is there an analogy for people? Some programs are, I mean, where do you, where do you take that? It's clever, but what? Well, I mean, if we are talking about uh, Vapnik, so his point is very, very clear, and I can, I guess I can speak on his behalf on that because he was very, very clear on this. So uh, he looks at uh, deep learning as a very interesting tool, but we don't understand really what's going on. So from his viewpoint, there's no, not enough science in it to really uh, make it into... Um, uh, There's only the, one view. Yeah, yeah it, it, it's, it's Vapnik's view. Uh, well, I mean, it's really very difficult to say because, you know, there's like 25 years of a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of papers on, on that field. But the truth is we don't really understand what is going on. And now that we are talking about deep learning, and deep learning is the idea of having different, uh, several layers of uh, networks, then one cannot understand why you put another layer, what's called a hidden layer, another hidden layer, why you take many more um, uh, what's called neurons or artificial neurons in each layer. Uh, whereas uh, his argument is that in, in uh, support vector machines, this is rooted uh, from a mathematical perspective in uh, the data, and so at least he understands it much, much uh, better. Uh, again, this remains to be seen. I believe that uh, obviously deep learning and, and uh, Yandex is doing a lot of deep learning, for example, as of course uh, many other presentations that we've seen here. So uh, there's a lot of very good applications uh, in deep learning. I mean, Jeff Hinton uh, took off uh, several percentage uh, in uh, uh, speech recognition uh, just a uh, few years ago. And for about 20 years, uh, no one was able to reduce uh, any uh, fraction of percent in speech recognition. So obviously, there's immense uh, improvement uh, using these techniques. Uh, support vector machines is also very powerful in various applications uh, and demonstrating that. So, you know, the point is that there are really now two schools, and uh, it's kind of interesting that, uh, uh, that Jan Le Kuhn, who is leading the School of uh, Deep Learning, is working hand in hand with uh, Vapnik, uh, who is leading, of course, the School of Support Vector. Thanks. So, final comments, and then we'll do some audience. Yeah, the, the connection between, between the three previous days and today is that today we have people who, who are supposed to apply all this to the real data they have in real tasks, uh, in, in real life. Uh, we have top scientists uh, of the corporations here, researchers, and uh, you, you are the people who sit on real data, you, who sit on real tasks, and you will be using the, the method, the science is developing, the, that's the main message of the previous three days. Yes, there is science there, and it's being better and better. So there will be methods to resolve all these problems, and today, 
uh, I think uh, on these sessions of on six six sessions which uh, will come, uh, we will exchange. You will exchange actually uh, uh, ideas and, and your experiences in wh what you really face in real life, and we we hope that. Uh, most of the interaction will be maybe behind this this scene. So, in essence, are you brilliant musicians playing bad violins, or are the violins pretty good? Uh, some questions, comments. Anybody? Just raise your hand, and someone will bring you a mic. So, as we speak, by the way, Professor Vladimir Vapnik just uh, went into the room. So, uh, if you have any questions. Uh, <laughs> He's the right He's person here to, to answer. answer them. Come on, somebody must. Did everybody understand everything they said? <laughs> uh, well, let's just. It's a long day. <laughs> Pardon? It's a long day, maybe. We yeah, should, we could yeah. we could move on. <laughs> Seriously, uh, yes, there is a question. You already again. Yes, yeah, yeah, just go ahead. Because yeah. they make recording. We're, we're going to record you and then interpret right. what you said. <laughs> okay. The question is to which language? <laughs> uh, well, uh, I, I think that this uh, discussion uh, regarding uh, uh, the controversy between these two schools was very relevant for the previous three days. Today we are at the business challenges. And uh, it seems to me that, uh, uh, for that matter, the, uh, uh, the, 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 actually there is no question. This reminds me of uh, uh, one uh, guy I hired, it was 20 years ago exactly, a professor from uh, Tomsk uh, uh, University. And uh, I gave him a task, and after two days he came back uh, with eight uh, pages uh, then densely filled with formula and uh, said, look, this is the proof that the task you gave me is equivalent to this particular problem, which is known to be unsolved, to be unsolvable. <laughs> I told him, look, uh, I rebuked him as a joke, of course. You, you wasted two days to prove me that this uh, problem is unsolvable. I knew it in the first hand. The, uh, your task is to solve this. And then I quoted, uh, Arkadian Boris Trugatsky. It's, uh, it's no trick to solve a solvable problem. You are here to solve unsolvable problem. So I think that uh, we should better uh, uh, take care today of uh, the question how we uh, solve unsolvable problem in practice without uh, uh, worrying uh, why they are solved and without worrying how to uh, publish a paper in scientific uh, magazine uh, proving that the solution is correct. Okay, I think I that's... Um, let me, let just, me add to just one, first, please say who you are in Arkady, you too. Okay, sorry. Just very much I'm Uri Degen, I'm a deputy CEO of a TSG company in Israel. Thank you. So Arkady Borkowski, and then uh, I think that was actually a very good way to start the sessions by talking about how we solve the unsolvable. Arkady, go ahead. Yeah, I really like Yuri's comment and I want to add to this. So we are living in a very interesting time. Until now, the purpose of science was primarily for communication between scientists so that they can share their knowledge and grow the knowledge of humanity together. And then somebody would take the science and apply it. We are getting to the situation where the science is actually applied by machines itself. And there is nothing wrong to use the science that we do not understand. Because we rely in our life on other people. And nobody understands and will ever understand how human mind works. And somehow we put a lot of trust into humans. And we put way more trust into humans than we put into technology or into science. So therefore, creating pieces of knowledge that can be executed <coughs> in uh, computers is 
nothing different from educating people. And as we do not understand and trust people, so we should be able to create the active science that we could trust without understanding. This does not mean that any black magic is useful. We do not trust any person. We only trust smart ones. So what we are getting to, we should be able to distinguish between things we do not understand and we should not trust, and the things we do not understand and we should trust. And this is essentially a really exciting time. Yeah, and I would like to see a software that could help us do that. Anyway, uh, I think we are now ready. F Unless there are further questions, we might as well get started because there is a lot to discuss. But this, this whole issue around understanding deeply versus understanding well enough to know which machines you should trust and which you shouldn't. And I think also another big question is, are the machines actually being fed the right data? And those are some of the questions I hope we'll be discussing later today. So with that, thank, thank you, you very much. And